You're watching Tag TV. Me to Kanyakumari, India's spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages, and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host, Uzma Jafri, and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Let's start this episode with this year's Diwali celebration. One of the most popular festivals in Hinduism, Diwali is a post-harvest festival celebrating the bounty following the arrival of the monsoon in the country. Though the core reason behind its celebration remains the same, that is, victory of good over evil. One can witness several unique ways in which it is observed across the country. Let's take a look. India brightens up as people across the country illuminate their homes with lights, candles and clay lamps to celebrate the most awaited and auspicious festival of Diwali. Marking the return of Lord Ram to Ayodhya after 14 years of exile, defeating Ravan, the powerful king of Lanka, the festival is observed with much pomp and show across the country. Later, people greet each other, exchange sweets and burn firecrackers to celebrate the festival. Though Diwali celebrations are almost the same across the country, there are few places where its festivities have a completely different touch. The one that tops the list is Ayodhya, the birthplace of Lord Ram. This holy land observes a grand Deepotsav as a part of the Diwali celebration. This year, more than 15.76 lakh earthen lamps were lit at the Ram Ki Pedi on the last day of the Deepotsav celebrations and has entered the Guinness Book of World Records. Sathyo, Deepavali ke Deepak, hamare liye keval ek vastu nahi hai. ये भारत के आदर्शों, मूल्य और दर्शन के जीवंत ऊर्जा पुंज है। आप देखिए, जहाँ तक नजर जा रही है, ज्योतियों की ये जगमग प्रकाश का ये प्रभाव रात के ललाट पर रस्मियों का ये विस्तार, भारत के मूल मंत्र in Kolkata, beautifully decorated Kali Pandals were installed and at night Kali Pujo or Shama Pujo took place in the city. Celebrations of all the festivals are started in the Mahakaleshwar temple in Ujjain. After this, the festival begins across the country. The celebrations start with the lightning of the sparkles and 56 different types of dishes are offered to the deity. In Goa, Diwali is dedicated to Lord Krishna destroying the demon Narkasur. Meanwhile in Punjab, the festival was celebrated with great zeal and fervour. Even though Punjab has a massive population of six, the festival was celebrated with full enthusiasm. Dipavali, this is the war. जिसको हम सभी लोग हंसी खुशी से बड़े धूमधाम से मनाते हैं ये पांच दिन का त्यौहार होता है इसमें पहले दिन धनत्रियोदशी आज है रूप चतुर्दशी है रूप चतुर्दशी के दिन महिलाएं सज धस के तैयार होती है Beginning with Dhanteras and ending with Bhaiduj, Diwali is altogether a five-day festival that in a true sense means ending all evils, cruelty and hatred towards one another. 
India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of these saints inform the lives of people and this was very well reflected at the shrine of Saint Hazrat Sheikh Saduddin Alias Bade Maktoum Sahab where people of all faiths assembled to seek the blessings of the holy saint. Examples of the peaceful and harmonious coexistence of the citizens could be easily spotted in different nooks and corners of the country. One such example is the shrine of Sufi Saint Hazrat Sheikh Saduddin Aliyaz Bade Magdoom Sahib, which is situated in the Karabad town in Sitapur district of Uttar Pradesh. This darga is also called Markaz of Kwami Unity. It has served as a sinecure of communal harmony for generations, which is thronged by a large number of devotees every day from across the nation, irrespective of their religion. ये दरगाह 522 वर्ष पुरानी है। अभी जो एक हफ्ता पहले उर्स हुआ है, वो 522 मार उर्स हुआ है। यहाँ पे सभी मजाहिब के लोग आते हैं और अपने श्रद्धा सुमन अर्पित करते हैं। यहाँ तो आने वाले से ना उसके जात और धर्म तो पूछा नहीं जाता, बल्कि मकतूम साहब उससे पूछते हैं कि आपका काम क्या है, आपकी मन्नत और इसीलिए आप खुद अपनी निगाहों से देख रहे हैं कि सभी मजहब के लोग आते हैं और समझिए कि राष्ट्रीय प्रतीक राष्ट्रीय एकता का एक प्रतीक का एक स्तंभ है समझिए। Regarded as one of the greatest Sufi saint, Hazrat Sheikh Saduddin throughout his life spread the message of Sufism and peace. Coming from far and wide, these devotees visit the dargah to seek the blessings of the holy saint. It is believed that saints solve all their problems and fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty-handed from here. यहाँ पर बहुत सी करामातें हैं जो हमारे सरकारे बादशाह हजरत बड़े मकदूम साहब बहुत अच्छे परेशान लोगों को सिफा देते हैं जो रोता हुआ यहाँ आता है वो हंसता हुआ इस दिल्ली से वापस जाता है यहाँ पर सारे कोम के लोग आते हैं सारे कोम के लोग आते हैं हर व्यक्ति आता है यहाँ पर चाहे हिंदू भाई हो या सिख भाई हो या ईसाई भाई हो सारे भाई यहाँ पर आते हैं और सब लोग अपने अपने मन्नतें मुरादें मांगते हैं और सबकी पूरी होती है। Since ages, the Sufi saints like Saint Hazrat Sheikh Saduddin Aliyaz Bade Magdoom Sahib has propagated the message of spiritualism and harmony in our country. And their teachings are still playing a significant role in strengthening the thread of secularism. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. With the help of YouTube, the residents of this small village in central India have become internet sensations. They have been starring in homegrown video productions inspired by Bollywood that range from slapstick comedy to action dramas with educational shots and the occasional rap song thrown in for variety. Tulsi Village's flagship YouTube channel being Chhattisgarhia now boasts nearly 120,000 subscribers and more than 200 videos and counting. It all started about five years ago when two friends Gyanendra Shukla and Jay Verma saw videos on the streaming service and thought they could also do something similar. This coincided with cheap mobile internet being offered in the country. ऐसा है कि हमारे गांव की आबादी लगभग 3000 के आसपास है और हमारे यहां 1000 लोग हमारे YouTube में सहयोग करते किसी न किसी रूप में कई लोग एक्टिंग करते हैं कोई वीडियो बनाता है खुद कई लोग के चैनल खुद के हैं तो ऐसा करके 1000 के आसपास जो हमारे गांव की आबादी है वो YouTube में इन्वॉल्व है The interest among villagers grew during the nationwide COVID-19 lockdown in 2020 which put many blue collar workers out of jobs and restricted movements now hundreds of residents are involved, from being on screen to post-production work. They upload roughly two to three fresh videos every month, making roughly $485 a month from YouTube, more than what they were making in their previous jobs, where they earned about $182 per month each. However, only around a dozen people who were already working or employed have taken the leap and given up paying jobs 
to focus on YouTube full time like Shukla and Verma. Most of the videos on being Chhattisgarhiya have 20,000 to 40,000 views, with some even crossing 100,000 views. Moviegoers who reached theatres to watch an action adventure drama Ram Setu in India's western Mumbai city expressed mixed opinions about the movie. Directed by Abhishek Sharma, Ram Setu stars Akshay Kumar, Jacqueline Fernandez, and Nushrat Barucha in lead roles. It tells the story of an archaeologist who tries to prove the existence of the Ram Setu, the bridge of Lord Ram. It is a good movie और concept बहुत अच्छा है और उसको present करने का जो तरीका है making भी बहुत अच्छी है actually एक धार्मिक मुद्दा है और उसको इतना beautifully present किया है कि दूसरे धर्म के लोगों को इससे कोई आपत्ति कोई controversy नहीं होगी. Meanwhile, some movie goers who watched the social comedy film Thank God said they liked the message conveyed by the film. Thank God, directed by Indra Kumar, presents the story of a man who can deceive death and return to earth or be sent to hell depending on his victory or loss in a game played with God. Newly appointed British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Indian relatives beamed with pride as they cut a cake to celebrate Sunak assuming his new role in western Ludhiana city. Sunak's maternal uncles, Rakesh Sood and Subhash Berry fed each other cakes as they gathered with other relatives to commemorate their nephew's win. Walking down memory lane, Sood displayed an old photograph of himself with Sunak's parents Usha and Yashvir Sunak and Usha's sister and Sood's wife Veena Sood. Sunak formally became Britain's third Prime Minister in two months after meeting King Charles at Buckingham Palace. A Hindu, Sunak also becomes Britain's first Prime Minister of Indian origin. Being one of the richest men in parliament, he will have to find deep spending cuts to plug an estimated £40 billion hole in the public finances due to an economic slowdown, higher borrowing costs and six-month program of support for people's energy bills. He is tasked with tackling a mounting economic crisis, a warring political party and a deeply divided country in one of the greatest challenges to confront any new leader. India is a land where Sufism has not only flourished in its true spirit but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. The unity of these myriad faiths can be very well witnessed at the Dargahs of Sufi Saints. So today we take you to Dargah of Sufi Saint Hazrat Khwaja Nasiruddin Mahmood Chishti Nizami in Chirag Dilli that has been serving as a bridge between different castes and communities. People from far and wide visit the Chirag Delhi area to pay their respects at the Darga of Sufi Saint Hazrat Khwaja Nasiruddin Mahmood Chishti Nizami. The shrine was built by Feroz Shah Tughlaq in the year 1358. One of the most revered Sufi saints in Delhi, Nasiruddin Mahmood Chirag belonged to the Chishti order and is regarded as its final member. It is believed that Saint fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty handed from here. Dekha jaye to har mazhab ke log aate hain mashallah yahan par. Hindu ho, Sikh ho, jo bhi sab aate hain aur sabse achhi ye baat hai Chirag Delhi mein ki yahan pe ekta hai. Yahan koi Hindu Musliman kuch nahi hai mashallah. Yahan dekhiye agar kisi ke ghar mein bachcha paida hua hai area mein ya kisi behan ki shaadi hui ya kisi bhai ki shaadi hui to sabse pehle dargah mein aake matha tekenge fir mandir jayenge. Even today, people from different places and religions come and offer chaddas and seek the blessings of the holy saint. It is believed that whoever comes here with a true heart, Hazrat Khwaja solves all their issues. 
there is a large number of people who come to this dargah and claim themselves to be affected by diseases. After coming here, the effect of these diseases automatically ends. दरगाह में हम बहुत सालों से आ रहे हैं और वैसे हम वैसे तो हम हिंदू हैं लेकिन हम आते हैं क्योंकि मेरे बच्चे की तबीयत खराब थी तो हम झाड़ा लगवाने के लिए आए हैं हमारी श्रद्धा है यहाँ पे इसीलिए आए हैं और जो भी हमने मतलब जो भी हम मन्नत मांगते हैं कुछ भी हमारी पूरी हुई है इसलिए आते हैं यहाँ पे और जब मैं छोटी थी मेरा बॉर्न यहीं का ही है चिराग डेली का और अब मेरा बेटा भी बड़ा हो गया है तो इनको ले आती हूँ और मेरे हस्बैंड भी आते हैं मेरी सासू माँ भी आते हैं और दरगाह में मतलब सब कुछ अच्छा है सारी फैसिलिटी हैं कोई गंदगी वगैरह नहीं है अच्छा है हमें मतलब हम तो सब एक होके रहते हैं These dargahs loudly proclaim a message of peace and brotherhood and they have long served as markers of social concord. The harmony between many religious communities has been defining a characteristic of India's oneness. The International Monetary Fund recently heaped praise on India for facing unfavorable economic headwinds as the world braces for market damaging events unfolding at a rapid pace. Let's dive deeper into India's economic story. A recession looms and is expected to have a global impact from major developed economies to those just emerging. The annual conference of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank featured many discussions about the state of the world economy. With the Russia-Ukraine crisis escalating to almost nuclear threats, oil prices spiking the world over, and general slowdown in consumption patterns coupled with global high inflation, the mood was grim at this year's IMF meet with fears of a recession looming large. However, amidst this gloom and doom, The IMF reserves special praise for India. India deserves to be called a bright spot on this otherwise darker horizon uh, because uh, it has uh, been a, a fast-growing economy even during these uh, difficult times. But most importantly, this growth is underpinned by structural reforms. India's path to a strong economic model to be emulated by the world has not been an easy one. Painstaking groundwork was implemented on a mission mode to make a large part of the population digitally compliant. The DBT, or Direct Benefit Transfer Scheme, which transfers government funds directly to beneficiaries without any interference from middlemen, also was a topic of praise by the IMF, calling it a logistical marvel. If I look at the case of India, um, it, it is actually quite impressive. In fact, uh, just because of the sheer size of the country, it's it's a logistical marvel how uh, these programs that uh, seek to help uh, people who are at low income levels reach literally hundreds of millions of people. In contrast to this success story of Digital India. We look at the German finance minister's recent comments when asked to conduct a similar exercise in his country. Prominent Twitter users were aghast that Germany had difficulty matching bank accounts with beneficiaries and that a process like India's DBT could take almost 18 months. One sector, however, that remains a worry for India is the dollar to rupee exchange rate. With the rupee breaching 82 rupees to a dollar, Headlines across the Indian media landscape predict a doomsday scenario for the Indian rupee. However, if we dig a little deeper into the data behind the exchange rate fluctuation, we see that in 2022, the rupee depreciation has been a lot less than other Asian currencies, despite an increasing crude oil bill. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman reiterated this fact on her recent trip to Washington D.C. Let's listen in. I think Indian rupee has performed much better than many other emerging market currencies. But I think the efforts are by the RBI more towards maintaining a certain um, let's say more towards seeing that there are too much there are not too much of volatility. It is not too 
intervene in the market to fix the value of rupee. According to the World Economic Outlook published by the International Monetary Fund, India is projected to surpass Germany to become the fourth largest economy by financial year 2027. It also says that India would expand faster than Japan by financial year 2028. Political stability and attractiveness of the Indian economy as an investment destination for foreign multinationals can continue to drive structural flows into the country via foreign direct investment. This will further strengthen the country's strong economic foundation. While the world was still rebuilding from the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftershocks, India took a massive leap on the economic front when it recently surpassed the United Kingdom in terms of nominal GDP. Observers say that a tripartite foundation consisting of a resolute political will to make difficult decisions for the greater good, swift implementation of fiscal objectives, and a development strategy based on science and technology has yielded rich dividends for the country. As countries brace for economic headwinds, the Indian growth story continues to march on. As the IMF put it, India remains a bright spot in a dark horizon. And in the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Dog lovers of Nepal honoured canines by putting garlands around their necks and indulging them with treats to celebrate a Hindu festival highlighting the loyalty of dogs to humans. At a dog shelter in Lalitpur, a city on the outskirts of the capital Kathmandu, volunteers, residents and tourists took part in Kukur Tihar, a ceremony that takes place on the second day of a five-day Hindu festival to animals associated with Yamaraj, the god of death and justice. The tradition originates in Nepal, where street dogs are prevalent and dog welfare is struggling. In Nepal, dog welfare is receiving more widespread attention. There are an estimated 20,000 stray dogs in Kathmandu Valley alone, according to media reports. Authorities in Pokhara has been microchipping canines, while the Kathmandu City Council has launched dog management campaigns to control the stray population. Technology has become a major part of everyone's lives. Recently, Japanese ICT company Entity Communications organized an annual business forum. Entity Communications is contributing to industrial progress by utilizing its ICT solution including 5G. Toru Maruoka, president of Entity Communications, told the ICT company needs to provide a safe environment for communication to cope with a strong and active society in the future. え、私どもこうICT企業がご提供する環境というものはどういうものだろうかとお考えていますと、え、やはりモバイルあるいは固定の境目なくですね、いつでもどこでもセキュアにコミュニケーションが実現できる、こういうICT環境じゃないかと思
on several occasions. Iraq is the fifth most vulnerable country in the world to the climate crisis, according to the United Nations. Drought and extreme temperatures are drying up farmland and making large parts of Iraq barely habitable during the summer months. In Baghdad, Rahim has noticed a decrease in the number of trees over the last years as new constructions mushroomed in the capital. Sapling by sapling, Rahim is contributing to efforts by authorities to green the city and his passion is encouraging others to support his mission. Panasonic introduced the S2 Kibo field demonstrative experiment of Kusatsu factory in Shiga prefecture. Three storage batteries, pure hydrogen fuel cell generators and photovoltaic generator together can provide appropriate control and a stable supply of electricity. Panasonic says that it is the world's first demonstration to prove that 100% of the electricity consumed by a factory can be powered entirely by hydrogen from renewable sources. It also declared green impact to contribute to decreasing carbon dioxide emissions. By 2030, the carbon dioxide emissions of Panasonic business companies will be zero and by 2050, it will decrease 1% of the world's CO2 emissions. RE100を達成しようとしたときに、太陽電池と蓄電池だけでは Panasonic is developing home appliances with the latest technology. In addition, it has been conducting research and development of home fuel cell in a farm and hydrogen technology. H2 Kibo field is a stable and optimized power supply by an energy management system based on the integrated control of the power generators and storage system. The electricity generation amount is 500 kilowatts. It is not affected by climate change. Many companies are looking for solutions to achieve RE100. Panasonic's one-stop solution aims global decrease of CO2 emissions. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Uzma and it's goodbye from the entire production team. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.